I've wanted to make this video for some time, however, I've never found the words to start it. Minecraft, a game of blocks. A simple, peaceful experience that anyone can enjoy. There's of course infinite variability. People have turned Minecraft into whatever their hearts desire. And Minecraft has been a game released since November 11, 2011, some people even playing in the alpha and beta versions of the game. That's over 11 years. Since then, it's seen Game of the Year awards multiple times and has amassed more than a trillion views on YouTube, with those views actually being recognized in a sort of event hosted by YouTube themselves. What I'm getting at is that Minecraft is a huge game. It is so widely popular and well respected that I can't believe that there has been one aspect of the game so disrespected and brushed off within the Minecraft community. That is, of course, as the title implies, the end credits. I want to take a deep dive into the meaning behind this poem, the end poem, written expertly by Julian Goh, to the best of my ability, and explain to you how this beautiful work of art has impacted me. It is the story of two figures having their thoughts read by you, the player, and it couldn't be more beautifully fitting for the open-ended narrative that Minecraft exemplifies. So let's get started, and remember that this video is my interpretation of the poem, which doesn't always line up with the intended message. That's what makes interpreting this piece so much fun, as it's so open-ended, just like Minecraft itself. Since you made it this far in the video, I suppose you deserve an introduction in case you're new here. My name's Ash, and I'm a builder here in Minecraft who makes videos on, well, building. This type of video here is one like I've never done before, a video I am going on an adventure with. Forewarning, this video is incredibly deep, so if that's not your vibe, that's totally cool. Like I said, this is a completely new video that I'm trying out here on the channel. Essentially, I'm just a guy who has read this end story before, and now that I'm older, I found an interest in this poem and have the ability to piece it apart. If you want to know more about me, well, I do have plenty of videos for your beautiful face to watch, in case you're interested. But now that you know a little bit about me, let's actually get to understanding what this is all about. The End Poem by Julian Go is an 8 minute long scrolling of intriguing, thought provoking, even philosophical words. A story of two godlike figures captivated over the actions of the player. You. This poem is written in the third person, as a conversation between the two deities, gods, omniscient beings, ethereal presences, um, whatever you want to call them, for now. He begins his poem with these two, who I will call blue and green, respectively, talking about how the player has, quote, reached a higher level now. After defeating what is presumably the final boss in Minecraft, the Ender Dragon, this is a landmark for the end of the game. You completed the video game. Congratulations, next game, goodbye, come back another time. That's a done deal. Well, not exactly. You see, Minecraft is a game that doesn't quite have an ending, or a meaning. That is the core philosophy driving the nature of Minecraft. He knows this very well, the intention behind Minecraft, and early on, Blue mentions how the player, quote, worked with a million others to sculpt a true world in the fold of the, huh, that's odd, it's scrambled, and some other keywords of this line are scrambled too. It cannot read that thought, says Green. This right here sets the groundwork for this poem. It tells the player that they have not reached the highest level yet. That there is still more to do. In a typical game, one has an end goal, and a set of tasks to get toward that end goal. Not Minecraft. And this is simply the tip of the iceberg, my friends. We all know that Minecraft is a game that has no goal in mind, that barely has any instructions for the player. It is how he chooses to explore this realization which makes the poem all the more emotional, deep, and interesting. This player dreamed of sunlight and trees, of fire and water, it dreamed it created, and it dreamed it destroyed. It dreamed it hunted and was hunted, it dreamed of shelter. 
Instead of talking about Minecraft as a game in general, we're given many metaphors and pieces of imagery such as that one. If Go wanted to reveal to the player, finally, after all the perilous fighting and hard work, what this game was all about, then he would outright say it. Yet of course that's not the game Minecraft is. There's a connection that's hidden among the lines of this poem that reveals how meaning has to be, quote, achieved in the long dream of life, not the short dream of a game. The word dream is repeated multiple times throughout the entire poem, and it serves as a reminder that a dream is both within reality and within Minecraft. The two are connected, and one could say that Minecraft is an escape from the long dream of life. Respectively, Minecraft is referred to as the short dream of a game. It's a beautiful way of saying how immersive Minecraft can be, and I know from experience that it is the most excellent way to escape from a reality. A short dream, if you will. A world made entirely of dreams. Notice this line. Quote, there are times it is sad in the long dream. It creates worlds that have no summer, and shivers under a black sun, and takes its sad creation for reality. Which really is a metaphor showing how real life can be sad sometimes. Reality becomes dark and obscure. Minecraft can be an escape. So, what do these gods do about the sorrow the reader may experience both in the long dream of life and the short dream of a game? Surely, they have some advice, or because they are all-powerful beings, surely they have some insight into getting rid of sorrow. Well, no. And it's this part in the story which really intrigued me originally when reading this. Both Blue and Green would love to help out this player but they know that, quote, to cure it of sorrow would destroy it. The sorrow is part of its own private task. We cannot interfere. Sometimes this poem has no correlation to Minecraft at all, <laughs> and this is one of those moments. In fact, most of this poem just draws on Minecraft as an experience to expand on his philosophical discussion about reality itself. It'll switch between talking about Minecraft, and then the meaning of life, of how to live inside the long dream. The problem is that there is no solution to the question of life. Sorry, <laughs> if that's what you were hoping for. And all there is to do is to draw parallels between the game and reality, because Minecraft is an extension of reality. Each game will have that effect on its players. However, Minecraft will always have this transformative effect, an explosive fuel towards the imagination, because one can do anything inside the game. So what is there for blue and green to do? They cannot interfere. The player is, quote, too strong for this dream. To tell them how to live is to prevent them living. They of course would love to tell the player the truth of reality, and humankind asks the truth behind reality and existence in so many ways throughout history. Once again, this is a parallel that he draws between the game of Minecraft and the dream of real life. I will not tell the player how to live. The player is growing restless. I will tell the player a story, but not the truth. For there is no truth to these short and long dreams, and if there was a truth, it would be scrambled and given meaning individually by the dreamer. The point in this poem where I envision most people getting confused and uninterested is the story. Blue and green cannot tell the player how to live inside any of these dreams, but they can tell a story. So what is this story all about? Well, to put it quite simply, the story is about creation. We know the first part of the poem talks about finding meaning within the dream of the game and the dream of real life. The creation of humankind and the creation of Minecraft, both in their own unique poetic way. It jumps between the two dreams once again, explaining how the player within the long dream, quote, thought itself human on the thin crust of a spinning globe of molten rock. That, of course, is the earth, and he uses further figurative language to describe common things that give the earth actual life, like the sun. So I think it's at this point that you begin to see Okay, this poem is a lot deeper than Minecraft itself, and in the next stanza, The Short Dream of Life, the player, quote, dreamed it was a miner on the surface of a world that was flat and infinite, 
the sun was a square of white, and so on and so forth. I believe this story gets confusing because some people just expect it to be some crazy metaphor for the meaning of life, like the first half of the poem, and all of it's just going in and over their head. But this, this is all just a story. And it begins to get much more complicated. Did you think this poem was done being existential? No, completely wrong. <laughs> this isn't just any story. This is the story of you and how you relate to the universe and why the universe loves you. Blue and green are personifications of the universe itself and they quite literally state, we are the universe. We are everything you think isn't you. Once upon a time, there was a player. The player was you. Sometimes the player dreamed it was lost in a story. Sometimes the player dreamed it watched words on a screen. And this word sometimes comes up so often because there really is infinite variability within the abstraction and complexity of life and within Minecraft. It's incredibly impossible to define one definition of life and one definition of this poem. In order to get down to the most basic level of humanity, Go decides to take the story even further back. What is the player? The nagging question, who are you? We aren't entirely done with the story. The story continues to become more universal and goes much further back in time. Of the few lines which are explicitly stated, the answer to this infinitely complex question is written in two lines. You are the player, the story, the program, the human, made from nothing but milk and love. So there we go. That's a done deal. We figured out who you are. The entire meaning of this poem is that you are in fact a human. Well done. You are a human that also happens to be player of this little game called Minecraft. Well, yes, one could look at this and say the entire message is just that. But that's boring. There is always something deeper than the explicitly stated message in poems, I find. Subjective, and depending on the context, of course, there's a deeper takeaway that Go wants the reader, the player, the human, to take away from this poem. You do more than just existing as a human. You are alive. And because we can explain this consciousness of existence in words, because we have, quote, decoded words into meaning, decoded meanings into feelings, emotions, theories, ideas. We are truly alive. And in this fantasy dream of Minecraft where we create whatever we want, it is an extension of the very nature of being human, just on a much shorter scale and smaller scale. Such is why it's continually called the short dream of a game. Now that this poem has explained what it means to be the player of both life and of the game, it's up to you what you make of it. The biggest claim that sticks out to me is, quote, to tell them how to live is to prevent them living, meaning you as the player must create the world you want, whether that is in Minecraft or in real life. He leaves the audience with a perpetually exciting climax to this true masterpiece of art, exacting the thoughts of his reader by saying that, quote, the player had believed the universe had spoken to it through zeros and ones through the electricity of the world, through the scrolling words on a screen at the end of a dream. This poem is a metaphorical conversation with the universe itself, and I can't ever quite describe how impacting that is. It's different for every person, but for me it's what makes Minecraft stand out among all the other games I've played in my life. This nostalgic and reminiscent feeling of joy and freedom while playing Minecraft translates into real life flawlessly. Sometimes I feel as if the universe flows through me, like the words from this poem flow through me. It's a reminder that life is never perfect, but there are things to enjoy. There's always something to be filled with joy about. Sometimes that thing is Minecraft, and I love that. It's this beautiful, optimistic message about love that gets me every time, of realizing that there is no shortage of love in the universe because you are love. If there is anything to be happy about, it's just that. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and a great life.